Friends back in the day, you know, you used to have impersonators and like, um, you know, start off with Elvis impersonators and stuff like that. I mean, long before we were around or I was even born, and then you had to do like Beatles, and then you went up to, you know, you had all sorts of bands. Originally, it was tribute bands or about bands that were no more like the the Led Zeppelin or Queen. Or, yeah, nowadays you can get a tribute band to fucking anything. I mean, something comes in the charts, it'll be a tribute band to it in about a month's time. It, it's too watered down now. It is. The, the novelty's worn down. Unless you've got a big reputation or you've got to start before the big boom of tribute bands, which we were lucky to do, then um, you're okay. You've got your feet under the table. But for a band starting off now as a tribute, it's very hard. You could be ten times better than the band than, than the competition, but if there's a band established, it's very hard to get you noticed know, past them. You know? Be a sound like band, and you know, people want to want to pay a tenner just to have a sound like band with it. So, the look and the sound is on par. If you don't have the look and the sound, then you're a cover band, really, aren't you? So, as far as, far as looking like the band and stuff like that, you want to give people their money's worth, you want to give them a bit of what they might have saw or might have missed back in the day. <laughs> Many years ago, under a different name, the lineups have changed quite often, and that's, that's everything down to you know many reasons. But uh, it's still the same bands, still the same gimmick. The Stevens band, Isla's Appetite, kind of imploded mid tour, so we uh, become the replacement band, and we did a couple of weeks with Steven. Notably, the Cabin Club was probably the best two nights we did. The thing with Gilby as well, we did the, we opened for him. We did some stuff with Axel's current drummer and guitarist, Bumblefoot and Frank Ferrer. It all adds to the sort of kudos of being a tribute band. I mean, it doesn't really make no difference, you know, to the show. But you know, if there's a die-out fan that wants to go see someone, they they see that, then it's more of a novelty for them, sort of thing, you know. We um we brought people in. I mean, more notably now, um, my friend there. <laughs> Uh, we've brought Bend over in as the drummer more recently on uh, on shows and we'll bring him in on some bigger stuff soon. You know you're a good tribute band when a guy gives up porn. <laughs> <laughs> well I've been willing to do this all my life but I could never make a living as a drummer so that's why I went into porn. So uh, after uh, a 20 year sort of hiatus if you will I've been invited back to uh, do some cameos and guest appearances and I am having the time of my life. So, uh, Taking a bit of time off with some top little shaggy to come here tonight. And all I can say is if I fuck it up, right, we'll just have a big energy afterwards, right? Yeah! You get some of these scrutinising little bell ends that'll turn up to a gig, and if uh, one of the guitarists drops a note, shut up, twat! Someone drops a note, and uh, you know, if I sing off key or if I'm not sending a dental CD, you do get some pricks like that that like to hide behind their keyboard ninja Facebooks. And, but, uh, you know, let them get on with it. You know, it's not like we're losing anything off it. And, you know, I'm happy doing what we're doing. Some, some people take it more personal than others, sort of thing, you know, but uh, just get a hobby, get a Nintendo DS or something, do something with your life, apart from obsessing over it. What's the best tribute band name you know? I quite like the, there, was a, there was an Oasis tribute band called No Oasis. <laughs> yeah, which I thought it was quite yeah. clever. But then you start getting into the realms of like hairdressers, don't you? Like, you know, like hair razors or a cut above. Yeah, yeah you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. You start getting to those like really ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, names. There, there, there was one. It wasn't in this country, but they were Guns and Roses cover band called Lines and Noses. That was a good one. <laughs> I don't know. I think we get away with that over here. If you can do it right and you can sell your band in the right way, you can pretty much go as far as you want, especially if you've got some sort of funds up from your peers. I mean, we will still play the venues we started off in 
and then we'll also play you know your bigger stuff, your bigger festivals, everything else, and um, it can go as far as you want. I mean, you know, us alone, we've already done a lot of the outside countries. You know, uh, the Middle East, we've done India, we've done France, Italy, Germany. Uh, I'm trying, I'm working on Japan and America at the moment, so uh, hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have pulled that off. And uh, why not do all that, you know?